Hello, my name is Konstantin Dmitriev and uh, today I will be talking about managing sources of animation project. And uh, I not will be using our own sources, I will take a different open source project, the Marmoth Libre Movie. Uh, right now they are running crowdfunding campaign and uh, they have released a teaser uh, for their project together with all its sources. So let's take a look at the teaser. So, as you can see, it's really nice, it has ever some artwork and really cool frame-by-frame -frame animation. Uh, so, I have uh, downloaded all its sources, they are around 8 gigabytes in size. Uh, they are including all renderings. So let's see how we can optimize them using our tool called uh, RenderChan. RenderChan is our special software for managing uh, rendering of animation project. Let's open the Blender directory and here are the project uh, video sequence. And uh, let's take a look at the first shot. Uh, here we have uh, a sequence of images they are located here and uh, let's take a look at them a really really big uh, files it's a frame by frame rendering of uh, those sequence and uh, well i guess uh, the sources of this rendering are here in the c1 directory and here we have a Blender subdirectory as well, and I guess this is a composition of uh, all sources for this particular shot. If we will need to update this sequence, we have to render it uh, manually uh, to this directory, and uh, then the teaser will be updated. In the teaser, we have this sequence imported. It is animated. Animated here. Let me illustrate uh, this schema. We have many frame-by-frame -frame layers. Uh, here we are in C1 directory. For example, background, basic background, clouds, trees, front tree, etc. Some layers are frame by frame animations like this and they are composed together in the shot file C1 Blender and this file is uh, rendered as a very long layer and inserted into other Blender sequence which is called teaser and uh, here we have another, here we have a C2, more layers composed, and it's rendered again, and again inserted into teaser. So what we're gonna do, we are going to automate uh, this process of rendering and this process of rendering. First of all, we have to turn our project directory into, well, a project. Mm -hmm. 
now this is a project and uh, now let's try to render this shot and uh, but uh, in case of this shot we have a non-standard height so let's create a special configuration file uh, here it, it should be called in the same way as the file what we need to render but with conf fix at the end and let's write something like this to tell uh, that we need a triple head now we are ready to render this file with uh, render chan tool let's uh, write render chan Just location of the file and let's start rendering so it is finished now uh, obviously it took a while let me mention that uh, with render chan you can set up a render farm and uh, use multiple computers for rendering but uh, this is another topic uh, for now you probably noticed it that uh, when I was invoking RenderChan, I just specified the file name which I would like to render, but didn't specify the output path. The thing is uh, that uh, RenderChan sets the output path automatically. If we will get back to the project folder, we will notice that there is a new render subdirectory appeared. And if our file is located in C1 Blender, then we should look its rendering in the render subdirectory and C1 Blender the same path as for the original file. And the original file is called c1.blend and we have c1.blend.png here. And here all its rendered sequence. Let's insert it into the video sequence. So we have replaced it, uh, the content of this strip so they can remove all those files except the sun. Sun isn't rendering, isn't rendered from anything. And uh, let's insert uh, the second shot in the same way. But uh, it looks like for the second shot, let's take a look at it. The second shot to have a standard dimension, so we don't need any configuration file. So let's just uh, render it. Okay, it's finished. It. Let's replace it here as well. Go to the render directory, C2. And uh, let's replace the last two in the same way. And uh, here we, have, we probably need a configuration file again. Okay, this one is also finished. Let's replace. Mm -hmm, good. And uh, the last one. Okay, so we have all files uh, re rendered and uh, replaced. So, what are the advantages here? Well, uh, first of all, let's suppose I would like to change something in this shot. So, uh, I am opening C2, let's change the background. Now, to make this, uh, let's suppose I have changed several more files 
and uh, now I would like to update uh, them here in the main sequence file. The advantage here is that I don't need to specify which files I have modified and render them one by one. All I need is to write render chan and put the main file as an argument with the depth option which tells render chan to render the dependencies of this file only. In this case it checks all dependencies and detects changed files and uh, the changed files are re-rendered. In our case it re-renders uh, C2 shot which we have changed just now. Ok, it is finished so we just get back to our main sequence file click refresh sequencer. Now you can see the file is automatically updated. And we don't need to know exactly which files were changed. The second advantage is that all renderings are concentrated in the render subdirectory and I don't really need to keep this directory if I want to publish or transfer the sources to someone else. Because I can always rebuild this directory through renderchan. Let's remove it. So those are the files without rendering. Let's see. They are just around half gigabyte in size. It is 16 times smaller. And now I can upload them anywhere and anyone can rebuild all rendering just by calling renderchan command on this file with depth argument. Well, if we will forget to specify depth argument, nothing will go wrong. It just will take a little bit more time because the teaser file will be rendered it itself as well. Well, in our case we have PNG format for rendering data, but if we will need to render teaser.blend with renderchan, we probably want to have an AVI file as an output. Well, we can fix that but by creating a configuration file here. In this case, if we call renderchan on this file without depths option, then it will render all dependencies of this file and the file itself and will put the result in the render subdirectory. It will be called teaser.blend.avi. So we have a dramatically smaller size for the whole project. What does this mean for collaboration? If you collaboration online, then you have to transfer all your sources from one location to another. And the fact that you don't need to transfer renderings, that means that it's much easier to transfer your sources. It's faster, it's, uh, it means lower traffic, it means faster updates and your teammates don't need to dig uh, each time to figure out which shot should be updated, they just run uh, rendering for the main file and uh, it get updated automatically according to their changes. So that's uh, the idea behind the render chan tool. You can test it by yourself. I will remove render directory again and uh, I have published all this optimized project. Please check out the link attached to this video. So you can install render chan and try to rebuild it by yourself. Well, that's all for today. This was Konstantin Dmitriev from Marevna Project. Uh, thank you for attention and goodbye.